Hey guys, how y'all doing today? My name is Franchise Fanatic, and welcome back to the channel. And today, if you guys, is another Star Wars themed video. Now, I wanted to do this video for quite a long time. Leave a comment down below what you think about this topic once we get into it, and of course, leave a like. We would just help subscribe if you're new. So, regarding Star Wars, right? You guys know me. All Star Wars is good, but I really wanted to look at the Skywalker Saga today and kind of um, think about the titles of each film from Episode One to Episode Nine and kind of talk about the the you know the meaning of the title and just kind of what it means to me. So, we're gonna start off. With Episode 1, Star Wars The Phantom Menace. So, I think a lot of people, uh, you know, when they say, oh, The Phantom Menace, I go, oh, Palpatine, you know. Sheev Palpatine from Naboo, you know, he's he's the bad guy, he's the evil dude that's going to, you know, attack everyone and all that, and he's kind of gaining his power and all that uh, with the politics of Naboo and, you know, all that, the Trade Federation, yada, yada. Um, but I think a lot of people seem to forget that The Phantom Menace can also mean Anakin Skywalker because, of course, you know, I just got a Star Wars no uh, novel from Barnes & Noble, and they were talking about how, uh, you know, Anakin Skywalker's like, you know, 9, 10 years old or whatever, and he's basically just a little freaking kid that turns into a mass murderer who kills little kids. So it's kind of strange that, you know, you have this kind of, you know, almost sweet and innocent, you know, child that turns into basically, you know, Hitler in space. And it's kind of funny that, uh, you know, not many people realize that, oh yeah, the Phantom Menace, that can also mean Anakin Skywalker, because he's the Phantom, meaning in the shadows, and he's a menace, meaning, you know, he's the bad guy. So he, Anakin is the bad guy that's really in the shadows. He's really the Phantom Menace. You know, Palpatine is too, you know, there's shots of him just kind of standing there looking all creepy and all that, but, you know, hunched over and weird. But uh, I do think that, you know, the, the Phantom Menace really can mean Anakin as well. I think that's kind of interesting that you can kind of play those two together. Uh, episode 2, episode, episode 2, Attack of the Clones. Uh, my least favorite film, but I'm sure it's someone's favorite. And I do, I do really like, you know, I like watching it. Don't worry. I don't hate the film. Um, I don't hate anything Star Wars. It's just my least favorite, but I still enjoy it. Uh, so Attack of the Clones, of course, kind of, you can either chalk it down to just poor, you know, poor, uh, poor title from George Lucas, you know, Attack of the Clones, because really the clones don't necessarily attack, so to speak, you know what I mean? Because attack sounds like a negative, uh, you know, kind of an evil thing, like, you know, the clones are attacking, you know, that kind of thing, kind of like Order 66. But then you look at it and you go, oh, the clones are attacking for Order 66. And George Lucas knew. He planned everything with the prequels out in his mind. He knew that, you know, that, that one scene when Obi-Wan's talking to Jango Fett on Camino, and he's like, your, your clones are very impressive. You must be very proud. And he's like, you know, I'm just a simple man trying to make what that, you know, that kind of... And he, you know, Jango's basically telling Obi-Wan, oh, the clones are good. You know, they'll do their part. They'll do their part. So they, uh, you know, Jango knows, and Palpatine, of course, knows, you know, all the different, you know, Kaminoans and the cloning chips and all that happens. Um, so Attack of the Clones can really mean, yeah, they're attacking the Geonosians and the, and the battle droids and all that on Geonosis toward the end of the film, in the Petranchi Arena, whatever. But, uh, you know, it, it really is kind of a deeper meaning that Attack of the Clones is kind of foreshadowing what's going to happen in the Clone Wars Season 7 and, you know, uh, you know, Bad Batch, I guess, Episode 1 and Revenge of the Sith, which is kind of cool. Uh, you know, because when I heard Attack of the Clones, I'm like, yeah, they're not, even Lego Star Wars made fun of it. There's a Lego Star Wars short, and Anakin's like, Attack of the Clones, and, you know, Mace Windu's like, why'd they call it that? And he's like, it sounds cool, you know, and they're just attacking, it's, it's just stupid, but, you know, when you really think about it, you know, maybe it is foreshadowing what's going to be happening with Order 66, so pretty cool. Revenge of the Sith is pretty straightforward, the, the Sith get their revenge, you know, Palpatine kind of corrupts Anakin Skywalker to join the dark side, uh, you know, and I could talk for days about that, but that's, it's pretty straightforward, you know, the Sith get their revenge, through Anakin, and Palpatine basically wins. Palpatine is basically the winner of the prequel trilogy. He really kind of Fs over the Jedi. Anakin turns, uh, you know, evil, and, you know, madness ensues, so pretty cool stuff. Episode 4, A New Hope. Uh, again, pretty straightforward. You know, there's A New Hope with uh, Luke Skywalker, Leia Skywalker, Leia Organa. Um, you know, that's that's basically it. You know, maybe you can think about Obi-Wan Kenobi, you know, kind of helping train Luke and all that. Um, but really, A New Hope is signifying that, you know, there's, there's new Jedi arise, and, you know, in Luke... And Leia, which we find out in the sequel era, that, you know, Leia does have some training and all that, which is pretty cool. So that's, you know, kind of straightforward, but, you know, still cool. Um, episode 5, The Empire Strikes Back. Again, you know, pretty straightforward. The Empire, the new, you know, the, the, the new tyrannical evil in the galaxy, they strike back, right? They hit back harder and they go, they, uh, you know, they strike back. What do you want me to do? Um, there was a Lego Star Wars thing called The Empire Strikes Out, which is, you know, like a baseball thing. Kind of funny. I think that's kind of inventive. But, uh, yeah, really, The Empire Strikes Back is basically just kind of, uh, you know, saying the Empire is striking back, you know, they keep they keep going full throttle, they keep tw uh, trying to attack the, uh, you know, the Republic and all that, so pretty cool stuff, they're the Rebels. Return of the Jedi is very cool because it kind of shows that Luke Skywalker, you know, the Return of the Jedi 
is not just Return of Luke, it's the return of the Jedi, as in the religion, as in the populace of Jedi people, you know, plural. Um, it's not just Luke, it's everyone, you know, I mean, this this Luke coming back to the, to the light and, you know, becoming a Jedi Knight, as we see in, you know, Episode 6 and The Mandalorian, uh, before his fall with Ben Solo and all that in the sequels, it really shows Luke at, I don't want to say Luke is at his height there, because really Luke is at his height in The Last Jedi, but Luke is at his prime, so to speak, in the, you know, end of the originals, and, uh, you know, it's pretty cool that it shows the revenge of, or the, the return of Luke, but also, you know, maybe Leia's involved, and we do know that Leia and Luke were training, you know, so that's kind of cool. Leia is Force-sensitive. Very cool stuff. And, uh, you know, the, the originals, is, you know, A New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, it's very much straightforward, kind of like Revenge of the Sith, but, you know, it still is kind of cool. The Force Awakens, now this is a big one, um, because we're talking about, you know, the Force Awakening in Rey, Rey Palpatine, soon to be uh, Rey Skywalker. Uh, you know, so we kind of see the Force literally awakening in her. Uh, it's been there the whole time, but really when Kylo Ren you know, probes her mind, so to speak, to get the location of BB-8, um, you really see the, you know, the, the dyad form between Kylo and Rey, or Ben and Rey, and it really is cool to see that, you know, bond happening, um, between the two, which is really freaking cool, and, you know, again, the Force is awakening in Rey, it's awakening in Kylo, it's awakening in Luke again, so to speak, Snoke is feeling it, you know, which is actually Palpatine, so it's really cool that the Force awakening is not just in Rey, it's in really all things, and that's really cool. Uh, The Last Jedi, favorite movie of all time, uh, basically, you know, it's, it's deep because it's, when you read the title, you're like, oh, Luke is the last Jedi. Okay. Rey will not be, or, you know, Luke also will not be the last Jedi because Rey is now the last Jedi. And then we know in the Rise of Skywalker that Finn is force sensitive and maybe the broom kid, he used the force. So the last Jedi really means a lot of things. And it's not just, oh, it's the end of Luke, or oh, it's the beginning of Rey. It's that, but it's also so much more, which is really cool that, you know, um, it's it's a fearful thing for Snoke in the First Order, and, you know, Palpatine and all that, and Kylo Ren that, you know, oh, we're going to wipe out the last of the Jedi, and then Luke's like, nope, I will not be the last Jedi. And then Rey, you know, is basically a, a whole new hope for the galaxy. And then we get the Rise of Skywalker, which is probably my favorite title for the different meanings. So we get the Rise of Skywalker, meaning Rey Skywalker, right? Rey Palpatine becomes or adopts the name or is, you know, allowed to use the name Ray Skywalker. Uh, we have Ben Solo, who is a Skywalker, who again rises from the ashes to become Ben Solo again, no longer Kylo Ren. We have Luke, signifying his rise from you know, learning from his failure in The Last Jedi and The Force Awakens and all that sequel stuff, um, you know, by literally rising the X-Wing out of the swamp, so to speak, of, you know, Dagobah, which he couldn't do in 5, which he did do in 9, which again signifies that kind of, uh, you know, end of an era uh, character arc, which is really cool. Uh, we also get the Rise of Skywalker, which is Leia, who uh, basically sacrifices herself to save Kylo Ren, or to save Ben, uh, which is really cool. So there's a lot of unique stuff in the Rise of Skywalker. It's not just, oh, you know, Rey becomes a Skywalker. There's, you know, Kylo, and there's Leia, and basically every single member of the Skywalker family, including Rey, rises in some port. So I think that's really cool. So again, all of these, you know, movie meanings have something to do with something that's a little deeper. You know, it's not just, oh, the Phantom Menace is Palpatine, or Attack of the Clones. I guess they attack, you know, the Rise of Skywalker, oh, Rise of Skywalker, it's, there's so much more to all these titles, and that's what's really cool, you know, is that when you really think about the titles of these films, uh, and the films in general, you know, the meanings and the plot points and all that, it's freaking insane, man. Star Wars is a great franchise, and I can't wait to see it grow, and I just thought I'd make this little video talking about all nine films of the Skywalker saga, just kind of telling you guys what I think about each title and what it means to me. Again, there, some of these can go a little bit deeper, you know, and some of them can be a little bit more... Uh, I guess, easy, like, you know, A New Hope, or Revenge of the Sith, or Return of the Jedi, or The Empire Strikes Back. You know, those are good, but they're more meaning, uh, you know, they're more simple in their meaning. Last Jedi, Force Awakens, Rise of Skywalker, Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, those are more, you know, get the wheels turning in your mind type of thing. So I think that's really cool. Again, I can't wait to see, uh, you know, apparently we're going to be getting a lot more prequel content, good, a lot more original content, good, a lot more sequel content, which is really freaking good for me, and I'm sure a bunch of you sequel fans out there too. Uh, you know, getting more of these characters like Finn and Poe and Rey and all that's going to be awesome. I already made a video on it, so go check that out if you haven't. But again, I just wanted to kind of talk about all nine Skywalker Saga films and what they mean to me. Tell me in the comments what your favorite title is down below and what it means to you. Thank you guys, and we'll see you in the next video.